Let's move over, <laughs> Lacey. Okay. So, um, yeah, move this way. Move this way. This is still Unit 8. This is the last video on Unit 8, and we're going to talk about the um, vocabulary in this unit, but also there's one more adjective that gets introduced in this lesson. Um, uh, we put up on the, on, uh, Felicia's put up on the blackboard the forms of the singular of this adjective, pas, pas, a pan, okay? Um, we'll talk about the meaning of it in a second, but if you look at the forms, pas, pas, a pan, the genitive is pantos, pase, spantos. This is exactly like the aorist active participles, lusas, lusasa, lusan, lusantos, lusase, lusantos. The dative plural masculine and neuter is lusase, so the dative plural of pas, pas, pan in the masculine and neuter is pasi, okay, with the optional new movable at the end, okay? So th these forms are not challenging. You've already learned the adjectives of this type by learning the aorist active participles, okay? Um, what's interesting about this word, and it's very interesting and kind of amazing, is what it means. Um, it, it has the meaning of three different words in English. I think we move to the next screen, right? We can't. We have to pause. All right. <laughs> okay, so in English, pause. The, the English words that pause, pause upon, oh, oh, the word, in English, the words that pause, pause upon means are all, every, and whole. And we've given you two example sentences that are really just slightly variant, the second one. All the animals ate the whole thing every day. Um, that's, the, that's one sentence that uses all of these three different words that are really, in Greek, the same notion. Okay, And notice how they work in English. All has to be with a plural. And you can have all the animals, in which the the comes after the all, okay, mm -hmm. or all animals without a the. Okay, um, the whole in which whole has to be preceded by the the can't come after it, and it has to be singular. And every likewise is singular, but you can't have a the. You can't say the every day, or every the day. Okay, um, unless you're using every day as an adjective, <laughs> the everyday house or the everyday habit or something. That's not the same thing. Okay, so it all boils down to. We should go to the next blackboard. It all boils down to this, that pas means all in the plural, whether there's an article with it or not. But if the article is there, it's going to come after it, just the way it does in English. Um, pas, forms of pas in the singular mean every if there is no article. But forms of pas in the singular mean whole if there's an article in front of it. So if you have ha, pas, something, it's going to be the whole. If it's pas in the singular with another noun, it's every. But hoi, with a, a pas, has to come after the pas. Pantes hoi anthropoi is going to mean all human beings. Mm -hmm. So really, it's intuitive if you, if, because we have the, exactly the same word or rules in English about these three words that you have with this one word in Greek. It's kind of amazing. All right, now let's move on to the vocabulary. Um, the vocabulary has one big defect in it for this lesson, on, which is on page 218. It gives you the meaning, it, it lists these three words, hata, hoya, and hose, but it does not give them definitions, which is what a vocabulary is supposed to do. <laughs> it says something very weird, okay? But what these three words are, are words that, when followed by a participle, okay, introduce a causal clause, a clause that expresses the reason for something. In other words, that we do with the English word since. Okay, so you, hata followed by a participle, and hoya followed by a participle, and hos followed, followed by a participle, will mean since. Okay, the last one won't mean since if the participle after the host is a future participle. That's how you tell whether um, a, a, a future, what's going on with the, that's how you make a purpose clause using a participle. You have host plus the future participle. Most of the time you do have the host. You, know, you don't leave it out, but you can in some cases leave out the, the host and it'll still be a purpose clause because it's a future participle. In other words, the, particip, the futurity of the participle has nothing to do with time. It's about attention, okay? So, um, 
this is a key thing. The book uh, makes a, a distinction between hata and hoya and ho, as on the one hand, and hos on the other. I don't think we need to worry about them. Okay, they're giving a reason for something. All three. All right. Um, the other words in the vocabulary. Well, there's one really important verb. It's the verb ago, and its principal parts are given. Ago, axo, egagon. It has a second aorist. Ago, egagon. No, you can tell it's a second aorist because it doesn't end in an alpha, and there's no s in front of it. Okay, axo is the future. Egagon is the aorist. Echa, egmai, and ekthane. Those are the perfect active the perfect middle and the air is passive. Notice, because it begins with a vowel, there's no reduplication in the perfect, but you augment the alpha into an eta, and it's aspirated, so that's why you have a ha in the active perfect. All right, and it translates this verb as lead. Um, I, I think I think it's misleading, no, no pun intended, okay? Um, what this verb actually means in Greek is to make something um, move that can move by itself okay it's th it's the opposite of the word pharaoh that means to carry something that can't move by itself so it, it means lead only in the sense that if you've got an animal and you argo it you're leading it you could be pushing it but you still be argoing it okay um, there are some uh, other refinements of this notion but it's also the most basic verbal idea. It kind of can mean just do something, ago, um, in a way that's different from prato and, um, and, and uh, the verbs that we've had. But I think it, it, it's, it's, to think of it as the opposite of pharaoh, I think is a big help. All right, we get the adjective athenaios. Notice that it's the adjective derived from the plural noun Athenai, the city of Athens has an S on it in English because it's a plural in Greek, um, Athenai, and so you when you make an adjective, you just add os onto it. So that's the way you say Athenian. Um, we also get the uh, adverb hama, that, that means at the same time, um, and it's also a preposition that means together with, so along with. Um, we get the adverb epeta, which means then, there's also eta without the ep in front of it, so that's already a compound. We get this really, what's, uh, what's really a defective verb, um, the verb heko, that has only uh, what the book lists out as a present and a future, um, and it has a perfective meaning. It, in the present, it means I have come, and in the future, hexo, it means I will have come, okay? So because it, me it means I have come, uh, that is, you've completed the process of coming, it means I'm here, I've arrived, okay? Um, again, it's a present perfect, so, so that's why this funny meaning, okay? It doesn't have any other principal parts, only a present and a future. No aorist, no perfect, uh, no aorist passive, nothing. All right, um, next word in the vocabulary is chi pair. Uh, that is a compound of chi and the particle pair that it translates as although, but it means although only with participles, okay? So this is the way you can unmistakably use a participle to introduce an although clause, is to precede it by chi pair. Again, when you have that chi pair, it means although, then you get the subject by looking at the, for the noun that the participle agrees with and making that the subject of the although clause. That's the trick to these things, all right? We get meta, meta, and ute, ute, okay? Ute, ute means neither nor, and so does meta, meta, um, but they just follow the rules of when you use u and when you use me, okay? So far, we've only had a couple of those. We've had u, for example, in fact, to negate facts, and me to negate conditional sentences. Um, that's, that's a key thing about about conditional participles, by the way, mm -hmm. an important thing to remember. If you've got a, 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 a kind of circumstantial participle with a me in front of it, it's going to be a negative condition, okay? Because the only uh, way in which you, you negate the me in a participle is when it means uh, unless, if not, okay? So, so that's something to watch out for. You can tell that a participle is conditional 
if it's got my in front of it. All right. Um, we also get the word for wine, oinos, oinu genitive. It's a masculine noun. Originally, there was a W in front of it, oinos, so it's actually related to the English word wine, which comes from Latin winum. Um, so these are it's the subject it's the thing and the name for it that the Greeks um, inherited. Their original alcoholic beverage was mead. Okay, the oldest word for alcoholic beverage in Greek is methu, and it's the cognate with English mead, which is an alcoholic drink made from uh, fermented honey. You mix honey with water, let it sit. And it, turns into mead. Uh, um, but in Greek now, methu, in Greek, in classical Greek, methu means wine. It's the inherited word for a drink, and they didn't drink mead anymore. Um, all right, so so wine replaced it and stuff like that. Next word in the vocabulary is hamos, nevertheless. Um, the reason they've given you hamos, uh, an adverb that means nevertheless, is because it goes with all of those clauses. So this is another way you can tell if a given participial, circumstantial participle is a concessive or an although clause, if it's followed by, in the main sentence, by ne nevertheless. As you, you don't say, you only use nevertheless when you can see something, even though, although he, uh, he, he uh, ate his peas, he still, nevertheless, he still was hungry, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have nevertheless, you've got an although clause before it. And that's a way to disambiguate that kind of a participle. Um, so, so sometimes you can disambiguate the participle, uh, the participial function, the function of a circumstantial participle, just by looking at the context. Sometimes you have these words like chi pair. Uh, sometimes you have a negative like may. Sometimes you have a word in the main sentence like hamos that tells you that a participle um, is a concessive participle, for example. All right, um, the next word is paspasapan, which we just talked about, but there are also compounds of it. Hapas, which means everything put together, it's a stronger form of it. And sumpas is similar, it's everything together. It's the, the preposition sum with, uh, uh, combined with pas. So these are sort of intense forms of pas, not anything more. Um, stratos, the word for army. Uh, Pretty straightforward word. We have strategy from it, and stratified comes from it because it means something that's spread out in Greek. Stratos, a kind of participle from a verb that means to spread. Oh. So something spread out on a plane, a lot of people is an army. So the the word strategy comes from the Greek word strategos, with an accent on the last syllable, a second declension masculine noun that means a person who leads an army, who ago an army, okay. That's from the verb ago, and that's a general. Um, last word is chrema, chrematos, uh, the word that in the singular means thing, um, and in the plural, generally speaking, ta chremata means money. So chrema, chrematos is inflicted like soma, somatos. It's a neuter noun of the third declension. Uh, chrema, chrematos, ta, um, it's a word for thing and the plural money, or property, I think it was another meaning of it. That's it. That's it.